One of the most enjoyable things about making these YouTube videos is the discussion in the chat. And a common theme or question I get is, hey, why don't you make a video on one of the other tramways of Australia, not just Sydney? And you know, an obvious choice would be to make one about Melbourne. But hey, let's go bigger. In this video, we're going to take a look at the story of all the tram networks in Australia. Their rise during the first half of last century, their huge fall, which came close to extinction by the 1960s, and then their gradual return in the last 20 years. I'm Marty, and welcome to another edition of Backtracks. Back at the peak of trams in Australia, and that was around the 1920s and the 1930s, Australia's tram networks were so extensive that Sydney and Melbourne, which were some of the largest in the world at the time, together only made up less than half of the total length of tramways operating across the country. And we could look at them in a number of different ways, but let's look at them by state, and we'll start in Queensland, with the most northerly of all the systems, and that was the Cairns to Mulgrave Tramway. It was a private, single-line route that opened in 1897 to serve the Mulgrave Central Sugar Mill. Now, this service was so successful that in 1911, the Queensland government bought the line and integrated it into Queensland Rail. If we head south, the next town to have trams was Rockhampton that operated steam trams from 1909 to 1939. Rockhampton was the only Australian city to use the toast rack style Purry steam trams built in Bordeaux, France. Now, of all the trams that were made by Purry, none of the trams were preserved. But Rockhampton City Council found the remains of one and decided on a reconstruction project in August 1982. The Nambour to Coulomb tram line was used between 1910 and 2001, operating over a sugar cane tram line. Nambour reintroduced the tourist tramway in 2021 using a diesel locomotive called Petrie. Now to Brisbane which had an extensive tram system that operated between 1885 and 1969. The network reached its largest size in 1952 with nearly 109 kilometres of routes. The peak years were 1944-1945 when nearly 160 million people travelled on the trams. And unlike most other large networks, trams were still going really strong in the early 60s, but disaster struck. More on that in a moment. The tram system covers the city and suburbs. But how long will it last? Will Brisbane follow Sydney and other capitals and replace its trams with buses? Or will it, like Melbourne, keep the trams? Only the future can provide the answer. In 1962, the Paddington Tram Depot burnt to the ground, destroying 65 trams. So they had to bring back a number of old dreadnought trams, and they did build some replacement trams from the ashes. But the fire was the catalyst for the anti-tram mayor to begin to close lines almost immediately. And from then on, lines were closed. The final closure came in April 1969. Well, that was a bit of a downer. But trams rose again in Queensland because in 2014 a new light rail was opened on the Gold Coast, which today runs between Helensvale Railway Station and Broadbeach. And it's been so popular that a southern extension to Burley Heads is set to open in 2025. Let's head south of the border now to New South Wales and the ACT, home to six different tram systems. A steam tram operated in Newcastle, New South Wales from 1887. The network was electrified quite late relative to other networks, only starting in 1923 and was completed in 1926. But after the end of petrol rationing, the lines closed, with the last line closing in 1950. So there was many years without trams, but construction of a modern system was announced in 2014 and the Newcastle Light Rail opened in February 2019. And just to the west of Newcastle is Maitland and that had a two-line steam tram system between 1909 and 1926. And heading way out west in New South Wales, a steam tramway operated in Broken Hill from 1902 until December 1926. It was actually a pretty extensive system. It had four lines, nearly 11 kilometres, and had 13 steam motors and 34 trailers. And now to the biggest one of them all. Regular Backtracks viewers know that Sydney once had an extensive tram system. 
having been permanently in place since 1879. The system was hugely popular by the 20th century, with people using it peaking at over 400 million people per annum in 1945. It had a maximum street mileage of 291 kilometres in 1923, making it the second largest in the British Empire after London. Unfortunately, the use of trams in Sydney declined rapidly after World War II, and during the 50s, the system was progressively closed until it closed entirely in 1961. But it wasn't all bad news. Well, it was for a long time, but in 1997, more than 30 years after the trams disappeared from Sydney streets, they were reintroduced with a single line light rail system operating between Central Station and Piermont. Then this was soon extended along the remaining section of the disused railway line to Lilyfield in 2000 and then to Dulwich Hill in 2014. A second line from Circular Quay in the Central Business District now runs along George Street, where trams last ran nearly 60 years before via Central Station to Randwick, which opened in December 2019, passing Randwick Racecourse. And there's a second branch line to Kingsford, having opened in March 2020. A new light rail line in network in the western part of Sydney is being developed. Stage one will run between Carlingford through Parramatta CBD and on to Westmead, and that is nearing completion. And the second stage has been announced, and that will run east to a Sydney Olympic Park. Heading now to the ACT and the nation's capital. Like the Gold Coast, Canberra never actually had an historical tram system, but it nearly did, because Walter Burley Griffin, who designed Canberra, designed the city to handle trams, but they were never included in the actual building of the city. The light rail system that did get built in Canberra opened in April 2019. Now the first line that opened links the northern suburb of Gungahlin to the city centre, also known as Civic. An extension to the southern suburb of Woden has been announced and it is in the planning stages. And now we arrive in Victoria and its capital Melbourne. Melbourne's first tram was a horse tram from Fairfield Railway Station to an estate development in Thornbury. It opened in 1884. That closed in 1890. Melbourne's cable tram system opened in 1885 and expanded to be one of the largest cable networks in the world, with nearly 75 kilometres of double track route through the city. And while that was relatively successful, its first electric tram line opened in 1889 but closed a few years later in 1886. But then in 1906, electric tram systems were opened in St Kilda and Essendon, marking the start of continuous operation of Melbourne's electric trams. The Melbourne network has around 250 kilometres, 493 trams, 24 routes, and nearly 1,700 tram stops. The system uses a combination of older W-class trams, which remain in service as a popular tourist attraction, and newer low floor trams such as this E-Class. While most people know that Melbourne, the capital of Victoria, had trams, what's less known that Victoria had more networks than any other state. So if we head down the eastern side of Port Phillip Bay, there's a pretty town called Sorrento where a steam tram operated between 1889 and 1921. And it connected with steamers from Melbourne or Queenscliff providing a tourist and to a lesser extent local service across the peninsula. Geelong is actually across the bay from Sorrento and it had an electric tram service from 1912 until 1956. Ballarat once operated an extensive tramway network which started in 1887 with horse-drawn trams. This was electrified between 1905 and 1913 and it closed pretty late in September 1971, of course replaced by buses. The Ballarat Tramway Museum operates a small section of the original track as a tourist and museum tramway. Bendigo first electrified its steam tram service in 1902 and following some extensions, it ended up with two lines that passed over each other at Charing Cross in the centre of the city. And finally in Victoria, there's a tourist tramway in Portland. Heading south over Bass Strait, we arrive in Tasmania and its capital Hobart had a municipal tram system from 1893 to 1960 with a network of eight routes through the city. Now the network was gradually scaled down and by 1960 was effectively gone and replaced by a short-lived trolleybus system until 1968. And heading up 
to the centre of the island, Launceston also had a municipal tram system from 1911 to 1952 with 29 trams. Back on the mainland, we head west to South Australia and Victor Harbour, where in 1894 a double-deck horse tram passenger service was added to the existing goods line on the causeway, and that continued up until 1955. And then in 1986, the state government reinstated the horse tramway, which is now known as the Victor Harbour Horse-Drawn Tram. The capital city of South Australia, Adelaide, had a horse tram network from 1878 to 1909, and then for the next 50 years, and it had an electrified network. During the 50s, buses increasingly took over the network, and by 1958, the whole street network was closed, except for one line, and that was the tram line between the centre of the city at Victoria Square to the beachside suburb of Glenelg. And it remained that way for many years until 2007, when the line was extended further into the city at North Terrace, and then west to near the Adelaide Railway Station. It was extended again in 2010 to the Adelaide Entertainment Centre, 2018 to the East End, and then finally a short 300 metre stub to the Adelaide Festival Centre and Adelaide Oval. Leaving over east and heading west, we arrive in Western Australia. Fremantle had a small tramway network between 1905 and 1952, and it was owned and operated by a group of local councils but it was never linked to the Perth network. And speaking of Perth, the Western Australian capital had trams running from 1899 between East Perth and West Perth along Hay Street. The network gradually expanded as far west as Claremont to Osborne Park, across the Swan River, Causeway to Victoria Park, Como and Welshpool. But over a 10 year period beginning in 1948, all the lines were gradually replaced by buses and the last tram ran in July, 1958. Leonora, a gold mining town to the west of Perth, had a steam tramway from 1901 and it was electrified in 1908 and it only had just one tram. And a final stop in our journey today is Kalgoorlie, which had trams between 1902 and 1952 with a pretty large network of about 24 kilometres. But when the gold field started to decline, some of the lines were closed in the 1920s, but there was a gold-led revival in the 1930s and the network continued for a lot longer, but then contracted again in the 1940s. Hey, by the way, how good do those Kalgoorlie trams look? Anyway, so that's a whistle-stop tour of Australia's tram networks. Their rise in the first half of last century, their massive fall, which came close to extinction, then the great work of so many tram museums to preserve the memory and then the last 20 years, the rise of the new light rails. And even better, so many more YouTubes I could make of tram networks in Australia. Thank you for watching and thank you as always to all information sources for these videos. And I hope to see you again next time when Backtracks takes another look at the lost transport networks of Australia. Or will it like Melbourne, keep the trams? Only the future can provide the answer.